Slip Casting Using Plaster Molds What we have here are a selection of Plaster of Paris molds used for slip casting in ceramics. These molds are made of a material called Plaster of Paris, which when it's dry is a white, hard substance that is quite heavy in the larger molds, but though it feels hard to the touch and the weight can be deceiving, it's actually a very fragile material and it can take damage, as you see here on the side where there's a large chip out of this particular mold, as well as on the back side, there is some significant damage. So please be advised when working with Plaster of Paris molds that uh, they need to be handled with care. Most molds for slip casting have two separate halves that are designed to fit together snugly. These are then held together with a large rubber band or perhaps a universal mold strap. When the two pieces are fit together and then held tightly, they are ready to have liquid clay, known as slip, poured inside of the negative space created inside the mold. Over time, the slip is left to sit and dry, forming a thick skin on the inside of the mold. Later on, the mold will be opened and removed, leaving the positive form of the slip cast inside. First, you want to select the mold that you're interested in using to create a slip cast. I've selected this one that is a round shaped vase. When it's done, it will appear like so. So here are the two halves of my mold. And it's first important to inspect for any damage because scratches, breaks, any sort of damage inside of this mold is going to affect how the end result looks that could appear on my final project. So I want to check for that. Next, I want to make sure that my mold is clean. Any leftover clay could also impact the end result. Sometimes these are very dirty and dusty from misuse, lack of use. And I just want to make sure that that's clean. But don't use any sharp tools to gouge or scrape that slip off of the mold. The plaster of Paris is very fragile and soft, and even your fingernails can end up leaving scratches in the mold. So don't try to clean this with a sharp tool and end up creating more damage. There you go. And now I need to hold these two pieces together, sandwiched tightly, so that when I pour the liquid clay slip in here, none of it oozes out of the seams. I need a tight, strong fit. So I have a couple options here. Large rubber bands for the slip casts we have available in the classroom, or a universal mold strap. And this strap can also hold the two pieces together very tightly. This can sometimes be a little bit tricky. You might need to ask for help from a friend. But I recommend three to four bands on here very tightly. All right. And sometimes you need to adjust the placement of the rubber bands a little bit because we will be pouring the clay into the opening of the mold and I don't want my rubber bands to be in the way too much. I can also use one of the 
these universal wool straps to hold the clay, the slip cast molds together. So I'm going to pull tightly that. So that is now very tightly holding the two halves of my mold together. Some white star casting slip. I need to carefully lift it up and if I hold this above the opening I should be able to Pour the slip into the mold, and I need to fill the mold all the way up past that brim as close to the rim of the mold as I can. Very slowly and carefully so as not to waste slip or create a mess. So you can see that very close to the rim right there I have poured the slip almost all the way up. The slip has been left to rest in the mold for approximately 45 for 6 minutes and you can see that in that time the moisture was wicked out of the slip and pulled into the plaster of Paris. So the clay was originally up at the brim of the mold and now that slip, as the moisture has left the slip, the slip has dropped down. So it was here, now it's lower the level has dropped. You can also see along here the skim that has built up around the mold. The clay is clinging to the inside of the mold and it is building up a thicker skin of clay around the shape of the mold. Now that the clay has been sitting here long enough to develop a layer on the inside of the mold, I need to pour the excess slip out of the mold and leave it to dry. I am going to take my mold and pour the extra slip out of the mold, leaving what's behind to dry. This can be messy, so I recommend a container to pour it into first. Hold it upside down for as long as you can. This can be difficult because it can be rather heavy. Take the clay that I just poured out and pour it back into my container. I find it's easier to empty the mold into something with a larger mouth, like this pitcher here, than it is to try and fit the slip back into the original can container on my first try. So here's a close-up view of my slip cast mold after the 46 minutes of rest, and I've poured the excess clay out. You can see the skin of clay that has clung to the walls of the mold as the water was pulled into the plaster of Paris. So you can see that, that shiny wet slip um, and the solidifying clay that is building up around the interior walls. So how thick this layer is here 
How thick that is is going to be dependent upon how long you leave the clay to sit. You don't want to leave the slip in for too long or the entire thing will become solid. Uh, you want it to just build up a layer and then be able to still pour the excess out so that your project is hollow and not solid clay. I'm going to leave this to sit and uh, let that begin to air dry. What I'm looking for is I'm looking for this to start to shrink as the moisture leaves it and when this shrinks it should pull away from the mold. So that could take as much as overnight. It's been about three hours since I poured out the slip from the center of this slip cast mold. And you can see that the slip has solidified along the interior edges of my mold. And you may be able to tell on the camera there's a little bit of a gap between that clay and the mold because the moisture has evaporated and the clay has shrunk. So the clay is pulling away from the mold and that's important before we peel this apart. There we go. So I just very lightly trimmed that out and I should have a little easier time. Okay, I took the top off and what I'm left with inside of my mold is the shape of the slip as it solidified to the walls of the mold. Handle it very carefully. Clay is still very, very soft. There it is. And this up here is actually just residue that needs to be cut away. And this here is the seam where the mold fit together. And there's just a little bit of a visible line here. So either now while the clay's soft or I could wait till it's more leather hard. I recommend waiting till it's more of a leather hard. You can take a cleanup tool and very lightly trim and shave some of that away. If you wait until the clay is leather hard and not as soft as I'm working with right now, you're less likely to leave accidental scratches or marks. My clay is still very soft. But I just wanted to demonstrate if I take that, I can remove a little bit of that seam and I can also follow up with a sponge and try to blend away and make that seam become invisible. And I would need to focus on this particular mold on trimming away some of this because that is actually not part of the mold. I would need to trim down to this line and take away that little bit of a collar around the base.